I know something you don't know. I know something you don't know. After all, isn't that the essence of all bad magic tricks? This underlying theme of the performer knows something people don't know. And in fact, as performers, I keep that in mind as one of the things we always have to be keeping in mind and fighting against. It's almost that contrast from that line, uh, I'll always be welcoming people into your theater. Big challenge as a magician is to try to come across as humble and as open as not fully in control and omnipotent while doing these amazing things. But Chris, all that philosophy and psychology, as valuable as it can be aside, I do know something you don't know. <laughs> I have something in my fist. You don't know what it is. I'm gonna give it to you. I'm gonna put it in your hand. But as I put it in your hand, first, I don't want you looking down at it. And if it feels wet and sticky, or starts to wiggle a bit, or makes this sound, <laughs> ignore it, okay? Hold it your hand. I know something you don't know. I'm gonna give you this. Close your hand around it. You don't know what it is. It's in there. How's it feel? What's it feel like? It is a piece of something. It'd be weird if it was complete in itself. An old world. It is a piece of paper. Okay. I know something. Hold it your first finger. Okay, now watch. I'm gonna take out my deck here. You take out his what? The deck. Uh, I'm gonna go through the cards here. And I'm gonna have you say, uh, stop at some point. Okay, we're only gonna use half the cards. I'm gonna put these away. So Chris essentially cut the cards. Okay. I'm gonna now uh, spread my spread them out. Touch one. Doesn't matter which one. That one right there. Okay, you might want to focus here. First one, it's a five. Okay. Second one, touch one, touch one. It's second one. He's got a second one here. In this case, it's uh, an eight. And one last one. Uh, you're sure? Okay, we got an eight, a five, and the last one is a three. A three, an eight, and a five. We're gonna go down the table here. Very slowly, going down. I like this, okay? We got a three, we got an eight, we got a five. Three cards. Give me that thing in your hand. Chris had no idea what this was because I didn't want him to get influenced in any way. I didn't want him to have any visual contact with it. I didn't want him to even be able to hear it. Just tactile, just intuition. And what this is, is a page I tore from a book this morning. A page, it was a very large book with hundreds and hundreds of uh, pages in it. Three, eight, five. Chris, we're gonna cut to a close up here and I want them to see that the page number is 385. There's so many different kinds of illusion in magic. When you vanish a coin, it's gone and it's not so much an intellectual thing as a visceral thing. Other kinds of magic or mentalism, and in fact, combinations of both therein and thereof and throughout and through them, them, them uh, other kinds of things uh, have uh, more of an intellectual appeal. And this is one of these tricks that the more someone thinks about it, the more impossible it becomes. And it's so important for us to leave room. We're kind of like farmers, I see it, as we plant these seeds, these moments, and you know, and then your presentation or the emotion around it waters those. And you know where trick really lives on is in people's minds. It happens in people's minds, we know that. But where a trick lives on after it's done, because it's a performance art and then it's over, where it lives on is in people's minds. And that's sort of where it really, I think, takes on a life of its own. And this is a great example of the kind of trick that in time, uh, people have a different perspective on it. At the end of this video, uh, first I'm gonna show you the technique on this. And this is a version of my Wichita switch or Wichita slip. Uh, I just call it the turnover force. It's in the hands. It looks a little more casual. And I think it looks a little less particular than the Wichita slip. It's also a bit easier. So I think for some of you, it's gonna really appeal to you. Uh, and at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you a few ideas, different ways you can do this, including one of my favorite presentations. I simply call it the $100 card trick. Uh, but I also want to take a moment here, to, uh, since I'm talking about all the psychology around this particular trick, is to thank so many of you uh, for subscribing to my new, or sort of new and upcoming site, uh, Connect and Influence. I also want to say I'm sorry. Uh, I meant to launch this channel a little sooner. Um, we've been taping a bunch of really cool, uh, insightful videos, uh, really about the psychology around so many different kinds of communication. It is coming. I'm sort of timing it near the end of the year because the end of the year is a great time. Everybody has a real passion to, I think, um, reconsider themselves and maybe set new goals for the new year. And that's gonna be right in line with this Connect and Influence channel. Uh, over 2,000, I think right now about 2,000, just over 2,000 of you have subscribed to the new channel. Uh, the major huge $5,000 contest is coming. The new videos are coming. Uh, at the end of this video, I'll have a link uh, so you can, in fact, just click the link and uh, be among the very first people in the world, on the planet, 
um, to get a chance to uh, win prizes and see the new videos on Connect and Influence. So it is coming. Having said all that, let's jump in and take a look at this turnover force. I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to find this easier to do not with a full deck. I can do with a full deck, I do it regularly with a full deck, but for now, which is why what you could do is you can start with someone cutting the pack, lifting off about half the cards, putting them away, and now you're down to half the deck. And half the deck, it's easier to do this with. And rather than starting it as a liability where I say, uh, here, uh, let's just use half the cards, having somebody, um, whenever you get people involved, it's stronger. And if you can get them involved in a free choice situation for something that is heading towards kind of a mentalism trick, then it's even stronger. So here I can have someone lift off about half the cards, put them aside and I'm left and they're already doing free choices that can affect things, but it makes the technical side of this easier for me. So practice this with half a deck until you get it strong enough. You're going to spread out the cards, have someone touch a card. You're going to sort of side jog that card to pronounce it. You're going to come over here and you're basically going to use these three fingers to feed off the bottom card as the left thumb pulls back the card and you're going to use the two fingers of your middle hand, these two fingers of your middle hand, uh, sorry, these two middle finger, middle hand, there's an image, middlehand.com, um, to grab the two fingers, you're going to grab the bottom card and turn it over on top. So that's what you're doing. It's here, it's here, and there. Push, push, turn. It is an easier move than the Wichita switch, like I said. They can touch any card. You push it off, you turn it over, okay? They can do one, they can do multiple cards. You know, now, and notice now, when you've got a couple of cards out jogged and you're doing, you're using the right hand to turn over the card, now there's a really large action to cover the switch, okay? When you're trying to do with a full deck, you're gonna find that you're gonna have to do more of the buckle technique. And the buckle technique is the tip of the first finger is holding the deck, freeing up these three fingers. And these three fingers don't push because you'll find with more cards, you're gonna end up having less control. So what you're gonna have to do is literally buckle, which is to pull back. Then when you pull back, you'll find by buckling that one card, you'll be able to more cleanly push it off, okay? More cleanly buckle and push. But with uh, half a deck, like I said, with this handling, you'll find you don't have to be as particular. It's there and just in casually pushing, you'll be able to with less weight on the card, you'll be able to more cleanly push over the bottom card. So they touch a card, I turn it over. They touch another one, I'm using that switch again and I'm sort of feeding the card from the left hand, it's here into the right, okay, as I turn over and they get all three. And I love the image of this. You know, notice the difference between this image and this image. This image, the cards are out. They could have come from any part of the pack. It's all about memory. But this image, here, here, and here. This image in this moment, to me, even more forcefully sells the idea of any three cards were touched from three different parts of the pack, okay? This could have been chosen, could have been this card, could have been this card, could have been this card. So this does two things. It shows the faces of the three, apparently free selections, and it also really sells the, the fairness of the process. So those are the details of the technical side of the secret switch I used. But as you and I know, and hopefully you know by now, and I definitely have known for a long time, that should not be confused for magic. Magic's a very different thing. Magic is an experience of something else, something that first and foremost people care about, right? And I'm always asking this and always asking this and, and urging you to consider how to get people to care what you do. Now, uh, I just had the three cards I needed on the bottom of my pack, right? Then I had them, uh, they're at the bottom of my deck. Then I have a spectator lift off some cards, already adding that free choice element. And then with just half a deck and my three force cards on the bottom, I got my Let's say I'm going to go with the 672 there on the bottom of the deck. And I go through and they touch three cards and boom, boom, boom. Now, but I want to engage them. So this idea of saying to them, I know something you don't know. And when I say this to people, I say, now I know what you're thinking, right? Magicians, huh? All about this. I know something you don't know. But I got to be honest with you. I do know something you don't know. And that is, I know what this is. So I've named the thing that is in a way coming between me and the audience. 
I've named the situation. And whether in comedy, whether in meeting people in a bar, in a club, uh, whether doing magic, I have found time and again, that's a very powerful principle, calling the situation. Very powerful, lots of ways. I don't wanna drill down. That's the kind of thing I'm gonna be talking about more on connected and influence. But for now, uh, this idea of naming the situation. I know something you don't know well, and then immediately going, well, for example, I know what's in my fist. And you kind of explode it and then admit that, well, I know something that's in my fist. And you, 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 you reveal how trite it really is. Okay, and revealing it, you take away its power and now you don't have something between you and the audience anymore. You've used it to connect you, okay? This is a really important, uh, sort of the chi of communication. So I have a, a page here and this could be a page from, a, this is actually from a hundred, I think it's a hundred buildings you gotta see before you die or a thousand, pretty fascinating stuff, architecture. Um, but it could be a page from a, you know, a comic book, could be a graphic novel, uh, could be whatever you want. You've got the page number down here and this idea of giving it to them and they hold on to it and they don't know what it is is immediately engaging in a way that so many magic tricks are not. Okay, it pulls them in, gets them engaged, okay? I don't want you to see it. I don't want you to smell it. I don't want you to hear it. Well, I kind of want you to smell it, but that's for another trick, sir. Don't want you to, and it's just right now, pure intuition, just something in your hand. So they're engaged. But there's so many other applications, so many other ways to reveal uh, this amazing coincidence between these three cards touched and something else. So one is the page from a book, really strong, engaging, people care about uh, you know, the, a magazine or it could have the face of a movie star, it could be from a, a fashion magazine, so many ways to get people involved and to spark conversation, okay? That's one. Another way uh, I've used, I used it for years is I would literally say from another deck, right? I'd have a red deck and I've had three other cards and maybe they'd be blue backs or something really weird backs. And I'd say, I'd lean in and say, Fred, I want you to ignore these cards. Don't think about these cards, ignore them. Don't think about them. Ignore these three cards, okay? And not just on a conscious level, but even on a psychic, you and I both know you possess some psychic powers, okay? I want you to ignore these cards, okay? And I put them down on the table and they touch the three cards and I turn them over and I look at them, I go, I told you to ignore these cards. Don't know why you didn't ignore them and then one, two, three, you show the match. Nice theater, nice way to be kind of miffed at them and but still engage people. You should have ignored these cards, okay? You could draw question marks on the back, you can make it theatrical, dramatic, take them out of your wallet, ignore these three cards. So that's another way to do this. Um, you could, after the three cards are touched, right? Have someone open the card case and remove a piece of paper. Very simple, a piece of paper. Have the person read out Six, seven, two, or they could even read out, you know, boom, boom, and again, you got the perfect match of those three. Uh, a coin, love this. Borrow a coin from some, borrow a penny, a nickel, a dime, a quarter, borrow a coin, do a switch uh, for say it's uh, 1985, okay? And you've got the nine, the eight, and the five from 1985. So you borrow a dime, switch it in for the one with the date, have them hold on to it, have them touch three cards, they turn them over, uh, and uh, yeah, and then have them read the date off, boom, 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 and they match perfectly. Got a real organic borrowed items kind of feel to it. That's another way. But probably over the years, I don't haven't performed this much in the last couple of years, but a long time ago, I used to perform it with a hundred dollar bill, which is why I call this my hundred dollar bill trick. And in fact, that was so long ago, now I'm so poor, I don't even have a hundred dollar bill to show you, but the serial number. If the serial number, the last three digits of it, in this case are a 973, then you can start by saying, you know, you've done a few tricks and you say, would you like to see my hundred dollar card trick? And they go, yeah. And you go, well, sorry, I uh, co actually cost a hundred bucks, but and you keep coming back to this, do another trick. And you, I know you're still thinking, I know what you're thinking about that. You're still thinking about that hundred dollar card trick, aren't you? It's actually when I do this, I give people a chance to win a hundred dollars, but I don't feel like doing it tonight. And you go on to something else. So you can keep bringing it back to that. You know, so it's a great way to build interest and engage people. And then finally, you take up $100 and say, hey, you guys ready? It's my $100 card trick. Fold this up. If I blow this trick, it doesn't come together. You get to keep 100 bucks. Talk about engagement. Now, it is kind of a crass way to engage people. It's money, but boy, it works. It really works. And they hold on to that, touch three cards, boom, boom, boom. And then you show that the, the last three digits of the serial number perfectly match the three freely selected cards. Very strong. As always, my friends, if you like this video, please click the like button. Click that like button, believe me. 
you know, I check it a lot. I wake up in the middle of the night and my wife goes, what are you doing? I'm just, I say, I just gotta go see how many likes there are. My kids hear me walking down the hall and say, dad, what are you doing? Are you checking the likes? And I go, I'm checking the likes. So please click the like button. And if you haven't subscribed, if you're looking at me right now and you're not a subscriber, I don't even know what to tell you. At least once a week, sometimes 14 times a week. Uh, new videos are coming. If this is the first video of mine you've ever seen, I want you to know that I do a wide variety of videos. I uh, focus mostly on card tricks and coin tricks and crazy stuff with borrowed items. Uh, and I also specialize in dolphin magic. It's a category not a lot of people know about. Um, it is dolphin magic, or as the locals call it, magic. Uh, so I hope you subscribe as well. Subscribe, hit the like button. Have a great day. See ya.